an entrepreneurship for everyone. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say this for the video. This is the toy box prototype. Would I have started my business if I knew that we would not have paid ourselves for the first two years, almost shut down the company twice, be profitable and then not be profitable the year after? Um, yeah, I think I would have. Ever since childhood, Ben Baltas wanted to be an entrepreneur, but he didn't know how or even what he would start. You know, I remember having a conversation with my dad when I was pretty young. I asked why Bill Gates was the richest man in the world, uh, and he told me he made computers easy to use. That insight, making technology easy for the world to use, inspired him to develop one of the most user-friendly 3D printers on the market. Even a kid could operate it. But getting there was anything but easy. The fact that we get to define the future of 3D printing, I want to give that up for the world. That being said, uh, it's f***ing hard. <laughs> you just started your dream business. How much profit will you need to pay your basic living expenses, like rent and ramen? This is a show about the economics of entrepreneurship and founders making their dreams a reality. This is Ramen Profitable. This is Ben Baltas. Before he started Toybox, he worked at Microsoft and considered himself a 3D printer hobbyist. What really inspired this was what happened outside of work. I had just enough money to buy a 3D printer. Zach, Jen, and I, we were building all types of stuff. Here's a little face planter that I designed. Shoes. But the learning curve was very steep. It was just so hard to use. Like, this could really be so much easier. Like, this could be so much better. Having backgrounds in tech, Ben, Zach, and Jen decided to try and build their own 3D printer, one that removed the complex barrier of entry, so you could print stuff with the click of a button. When we wanted to start this, we wanted to find a market that made a lot of sense, and we looked at a ton of markets. There's like plastic bins, that's like a $90 billion industry, right? Hand tools is like a $9 billion industry. There's tons of things around the house that you can print, but we wanted to start with something that people would find use out of right away. And for us, that was toys. So these are our first three prototypes. This is the one we took to Maker Faire. We built them all consecutively, one after the other. And this was really just like a proof of concept. Uh, it's all super glued together and painted. Definitely not something uh, we wanted to go to market with, but definitely got the job done. Ben and his friends decided to debut their passion project at Maker Faire, a convention for DIY enthusiasts to showcase what they've made. You know, I remember when we were planning for Maker Faire, I was thinking of it as uh, like a competition, like we're gonna win this trade show. In reality, our prototype was spray painted, it had paint marks all over it. We show up, everybody has these really expensive like setups and actual backdrops. And I remember looking around and just being like, oh my God, this is embarrassing. But, you know, once we set that thing up, kids were lining up for four hours just to print, you know, a small toy. I think we printed 600 toys just that weekend. The kids, they were the ones that really proved that we're onto something here. After Maker Faire, Ben, Jen, and Zach had all quit their jobs to work full-time on developing the toy box printer. We didn't pay ourselves for like the first two years. After I started using all of my money, I started dipping into my retirement account, uh, and that's when things got really low. But as money burned, they kept innovating. So this is what we ended up going with, uh, much better for production. What's unique about the toy box printer is the software. It allows users to browse toys on a computer or phone, select what they want, and simply press print. It demonstrates a future where you could easily be printing things like shoes, kitchenware, and tools at home. We have something called the creator space here where everything is customizable, and that's like a really key component of it. Finding the right price point is tricky. People come up to us just completely intrigued. Like, this is so cool. I want this in my home. I'd be like, how much do you think it costs? And they'd all be like, $500 to $1,000, right? I'd be like, no, it's only $400, you know, do you want it? And we got said no to by everyone for two months straight. It was a brutal experience, because like people thought it was more expensive than it was, but nobody was buying it. So we went down to like $200, and the first person we talked to bought it. 
Second person we talked to bought it. 200 was a little too cheap. We wouldn't be able to produce it for that cost. 300 was where we could reasonably price it at the time. And that's when people would kind of think about it and purchase it. With that insight, Ben was able to negotiate a factory deal that would allow them to hit their profit margins so they could begin their path towards profitability. Toybox had officially set the price of their printer at $300. Okay, I can close this up by like the end of the day. The next steps they took proved that timing and persistence would be everything if they were going to make a name for themselves in the toy industry. Ben and his co-founders raised $80,000 from a small group of investors, and they decided to use it on an Indiegogo campaign. That Indiegogo campaign returned around 160 k in sales. After that Indiegogo, Shark Tank contacted us to have us on the show. After we filmed, business was not doing too well. We were growing not as fast as we wanted to, and our runway was running out. The founders actually all got together, uh, and we had to have a conversation of how we were going to shut down the company. That's a brutal experience. But as luck would have it, their Shark Tank episode aired, and something incredible happened. We have these notifications on our phone that, you know, pretty much ring every time there was a sale. Every two or three seconds, uh, we were selling a printer. That generated something like half a million in sales. We sold out almost immediately. That made a huge difference for us. The ramp up has just been pretty extreme since then. Over the next five years, Toybox went from $160,000 in annual revenue to $10.6 million. They recently launched a subscription service, bringing in an extra $1.2 million. And Toybox even landed a large licensing deal with Warner Brothers, where users can print their content. Most success arcs have periods where the founders think they're going to fail and push through it. You know, if you look at almost every success story, there are those moments. And I think what differentiates, you know, the sex successful people are just the people that don't give up. And a little bit of luck. We actually 3D printed our first 3D printer prototype. I remember putting it together in my mom's garage and I accidentally spray painted my mom's car and I feel so bad about it. 